Hey, what's up, everybody? I am Miko Kelly, author, coach, and investor. We are in the midst of No Shame November. This campaign is helping saving lives, honey, and I am so excited to be a part of your journey, and I'm glad that you're a part of my journey as well. I am extremely excited to talk about mental health shaming tonight. I just posted a photo of myself. Um, it's probably like the beginning stages of uh, my weight loss journey, and basically during that first stage of it, I got triggered and I had to go and see somebody. I had to see a therapist. I was really, really down, really depressed. Even though I was losing weight, I still was very insecure. So I just, I knew I needed to see a therapist. What we're talking about tonight is shaming people for going to therapy. How many times have we heard, oh, you crazy, you psycho, what you going to, what you going to see a therapist for? You know, it's, sad but we do have to discuss this because it's important so if you calling somebody crazy or psycho you're shaming them you know if you're mocking them because of their mental health issues you're shaming them and that's just sad i just i don't like to see that tonight i have a special guest her name is Christine. She is the founder and executive director of Blessings Alopecia Mental Health foundation i'm so excited to have her join me and i'm so thankful that you guys are joining me what's up boone what's up hello my beautiful queen dc baddest i love you diane how are you my friend so you know with this lovely technology i'm trying to figure out how to get christine on here but i believe i got her now Christine is going to join us. She's going to talk to us about shaming, and we're going to just, we're going to set some things straight. Hello. Hello. How are you, beautiful? <laughs> Look at that smile. Oh, my goodness. I'm better today than I was yesterday. <laughs> Look, I can attest to that because I've been going through it, honey, so I'm just ex excited, first of all, to have you join me, and second of all, just, you know, for everyone who's tuning in to this No Shame November campaign, like, thank you so much. You know, for me, it's important because I really, really, really want people to know, you know, how it feels to be shamed, why it's important to stop it. So I just want to say thank you so much, Christine, for joining me today. Or you're welcome anytime, anytime. Tell the people who you are. I know I said your name and your title, but please let everybody out there know who you are. Uh, my name is Christine, and I'm the executive director and the founder of Blessings Alopecia Mental Health Foundation. It's to give awareness on alopecia and mental health, what to do, what not to do, and how to go about it. Trying to educate everybody on what to do, what not to do, how to speak to them, how to support them. Yeah. <laughs> um, things to look out for during the episodes and how... Um, with things to do during a time of need. Um, hopefully I can have my own rehab facility mm. that is designed comfort zone and give you a support system, which is the true medication of any medication for mental health is having a true support system and somebody who understands what you're going through to be able to get you to talk and, you know, let your wall come down so that you're able to take in all the love and the resources and the tools so that you can get better. Um, it's a walking testimony, so I'll keep it short. Um, I've like for me, I've experienced it, um, especially being a woman of color. Um, so it's like I have to educate yes. people on health because what they have out here is not what's really going on 2020 right. you know it's got to be one plus one is five okay you got mental health issues so you know it's like if you're fine if you're okay you, you don't have any issues i'm like no it's once you keep hitting those mm -hmm. triggers you know transfer over to the dark right. side so um like i said by me experiencing that and um you know briefly tell my story wanting to kill myself wanting to take drugs wanting to pretty much do any and everything up under yeah. the sun give my kids away, like everything. Like people don't understand. So it's like, I yeah. get it why people think right. that way. I, I understand it. So it's like, I need to help people to understand why people do the things that they do and how to support yeah. them so that they don't go to that far. Um, 
So yeah, <laughs> I, I'm trying to educate the community. <laughs> thank you. Look, thank you for your efforts because you know a lot of people they really don't care. They they don't care. Um, what made you start? your uh, foundation. I want to know the backstory on that. How did you, what, what made you start this? Um, initially I had started because of my son. He has alopecia. Okay. Um, so, you know, with the bullying and all that, I'm like trying to make sure I'm helping yes. him and trying to keep strong and things of that sort. So, you know, that's why it initially started was because of him and it's trying to educate kids on how to not, bully and talk about other kids and you know everybody's different but just different in their own special yes. way um but in the midst of me trying to protect my son i lost myself um some that's why i said you know, it was a <laughs> a full circle of things so i can understand it from a kid's point right. of view and also an adult adult's point right. of view so i just you know get the word out there so that we can stop this look stigma it's time to Ooh, break it. Ooh, I need one of those shirts. Tell me how I can purchase one. I need one ASAP. I got you. Thank you. Yes. Inbox. Like you can inbox me at b a m h foundation at gmail dot com to put your order yes. in. Um, it's yes. going to be on the website soon, so you'll be able to personalize it. So you'll be able to go to um, b a m h foundation dot com okay. as well. I'm going to try to get that in the um, the te text box and pin it. So everybody knows how to get a shirt because we have to spread awareness. We have to talk about it. I think one of the biggest things is that we are not opening our mouths. We're not having these discussions. We, we are just like living, you know, moving forward, like, Oh, it's okay. And I, I know like during this pandemic, mental health uh, awareness is very important because our kids are really mm -hmm. suffering from this, you know, not just yeah. the adults, but the kids. We have to think about the kids. How is your son? How's he been through out this pandemic? Is he? How's he coping? Um, he's ready to go back to school. <laughs> <laughs> but for the most part, um, between me and his dad, um, he's able to bounce back and forth. So it's, it's keeping him distracted, okay. and then he did football, so that helps distract him as well. Um, just trying to keep him in different right. activities to keep him distracted so that it doesn't just sit, feel like he's just sitting here doing yeah. nothing and it's just, okay, school or nothing, school oh, or yeah. nothing. <laughs> yeah. So I know tonight we're talking about mental health shaming. Have you ever experienced any type of shaming? Because I can talk about mine all day, but now I have you on here. You all can tell time. me, like, you know, what you've experienced. You're too pretty to be going through something. You're too pretty to have go through depression and anxiety. You're too mm -hmm. pretty to not have these thoughts. I'm like, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. like, I wish I could not do Yes. Okay, but so are you currently I'm in dark. therapy or have you have you done therapy before? Um, yes, I'm currently in therapy. My therapist, he is the bomb doctor. I love to hear that. <laughs> but I bet that he's um he's gonna transfer over to his own practice, so we gotta figure out yeah. some things. I'm like, um, you know, after probably like twelve different ones, right. you're the one that finally gets that wall to yes. come down. <laughs> yes. And it's important to find somebody that you can really talk to because I I've left yeah. a lot of like things on the table I've left therapists behind because I'm like this person does not they don't know anything about me and they're not even trying to get to know or help me digest it and work through it like I felt I don't know it, it was like it was a tough situation for me with a couple of different therapists like now I have someone let me tell you I had therapy today I had therapy today and I love having therapy before I do these calls because Homegirl, she makes me deal with my shit. She is not one of those people <laughs> that's like, are you okay? Are you doing this? Oh, no. She was like, did you do your homework from last week? Um, are you ready? Are you ready to dig deeper? I'm like, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> so every right. week I found out something new about myself that either I didn't want to deal with or I knew and I was just kind of like, you know, covering the wounds up. But how has therapy helped you? Cause, because I, I really want to encourage people out there to go to therapy. I can't say enough. So now I got somebody on here co-signing with me. Tell me how it To helped. me, I will say this, and this is what I tell anybody. You have to find the one that best fits you. Yeah. Like, 
I, I, to me, I give 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 a person look, give a therapist ninety days, <laughs> <laughs> and then after that ninety days, you know, go to the next. You kind of like will feel the energy yeah. of a therapist. See if that person will connect with you. And like I said, it, I've been to probably at least like twelve different ones. Um, so I was able to find that one. And like you say, it's just I don't want nobody to just be like, okay, my pen and paper, or yeah, okay, so how was your week? Yeah, no. So it m- the good thing about this therapist, he understood that my wall yeah. was up. So it's like, okay, no questions, but I'm gonna sit back because you want to eventually right. talk. And it's like, oh, okay. So one day, I think I went in there and I was like on the 10, mm-hmm. like 10. Mm-hmm. He was just like, oh, do you want to express yourself today? Yeah. Or do you want to wait for another time? And I was like, well, this MF and this MF. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Letting it out, honey. I going for it. Like, when I say I was dropping, yes. like, he was like, oh, okay. okay. Yes. And right. He's like, okay. Yeah. Uh-huh, I'm listening. Mm-hmm. And what else? I was like, I was like, Doc, I'm sorry, but can I smoke a J? He was like, Yep, go ahead, knock mm-hmm. yourself out. I was like, I need to smoke. So yes, I smoke medical marijuana. It's important. And I sat there and smoke. He's like, so you let it all out? You yeah. feel better now? I was like, I do. Like, yeah. I really do. And so it, to me, it's like I got to pause it for a second. So with the medical, I had to ed- also educate okay. myself on medical marijuana, which I want a lot of people to transfer over who is smoking weed, especially the street weed, um, to at least try medical okay. marijuana. Because um, for me, like, I, you know, I was smoking the, the street weed and it just feels like I was smoking so mm-hmm. much that I'm like, okay, pay my funds and set about it. Right. This is not me. Um, so w- when I did go in and they explain everything, it's like, I don't need it as mm-hmm. much. Okay. Like if I if I know like now if I know I'm about to go into a situation or something like this, I'll hit a little bit of sativa yeah. that has the exact medicine in it, and I'm like I'm fine. Yeah. I'm you know okay. And then at night I take my mm-hmm. infamous, so I can go to sleep. You know it's just a hit hit, and I'm right. fine. So and I try to tell people once you transfer over to the medical, you not only are you getting the medication that you need, but you're also getting what you want as well. So it's a you know a double whammy, but um. It, to me, you don't know what's in the street right. weed. You know, you don't know if it's homegrown. Yeah. You don't know if somebody spray thing on it. So that also can trigger your mental right. health as well. So yeah, like I said, but back to my therapist. But yes, I I, I did have to go through a lot of different ones. But and that's another thing. You also got to want to find this comfortable expressing mm. yourself. Some of these. Stuff, they're like, you can't right. say that. I'm going to have to call right. you know, the state and I got this and I got to call right. the protocol. And I'm like, no, I need you to understand the difference of me just expressing myself and me saying, hey, warning yes. signs, you know. Um, so it's, it's, it's definitely, that's like one of the things where I'm like, uh, at first it was just giving awareness, but now I'm like, no, I need my own, after me going through it, I need a rehab center because like I said, even one of the programs I went to was like, hi, my name is Christine. I suffer from depression, mm-hmm. anxiety, and PTSD. It's like, where's the gun so I can just... Like, I don't want right. to be... <laughs> like, I would rather be like a group of women or just a group yeah. of people and we paint or go rock climbing. We need to start that. We, we need to do that. Oh, I'm in the process. <laughs> I'm in the process. Let me know because um, I'm there, honey. I, I need an outlet because I feel like I talk to my therapist and then I don't want to talk to anybody else. And I feel like if I was around yeah. other women um, or men who were like-minded, who were going through the same healing process that I'm going through, you know, it'll probably be a lot easier for me to open up to other people because right now I have a yeah. set small circle. I mean, a really small circle because, you know, even with writing my book and releasing Love Is Not Pain, I'm still like, Ugh, I done told y'all all my shit. Y'all know how crazy I am, but I yeah. need to still I mean, deal with it. Yeah. It's, it, it, I mean, for me too, it's definitely a struggle. You know, there's those days I'm like the S on my chest. I'm like, All right, I'm going to tell my story. I'm going to get this mm-hmm. out there. I'm going to do what needs to be done. And then it's just like, Is this okay to pose? Is that okay? Yeah. So it's like, you know, that's why 
with my foundation, I want it to be a change. Yes. I want it to break that cycle. Because a lot of people, even with the name, a lot of people's like, blessings, alopecia, mental health. That's a long, <laughs> and I'm like, oh. but it's going to go with it too. This right. is what I want. And if people understand what I was going through and my passion behind yeah. it, they're going to support me, regardless if it's a thousand letters right. or two letters, you know. Um, but it, it's time to break that chain. And even when I'm out and about, because I've always been about giving back right. to the community, helping the community, supporting one another, uplifting one another, educating one another. So it's like for me to go through and I'm standing here and I can hear mm. people talking. I'm just, yeah, um, that yeah. The trigger, you yeah. know, you can right. say that. Like I've been through it. So I, exactly. I know when this, I'm, I'm saying, we, we got to break that chain. Right. So it, it, we, sometimes when I come across people and they see my shirt and they'll ask me questions, it's like, well, I didn't know that makes a difference. You know, I right. didn't know that I, I went about it this way. And I didn't know if I, and I was like, yeah, it takes a one. It takes a lot of patience, yes. a lot of patience and a lot of support and reassurance in order for someone to get better. Like for me, I go through an episode probably at least once right. a week, but um, at this point i've set up things or people or trips in place so that when i do have my episode it's not like i'm going completely off the deep end it's right. just like okay i'm emotional i just need for y'all to just be here bring me my steak and cheese on my <laughs> snicker bar then <laughs> you know my yes. cake and just with me and 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 it that will pull me out of my episode i'll say somewhere between Mid a half mm -hmm. a day, you mm -hmm. know, maybe a yeah. day. So at least I had a day because before, for me, going through an episode, I was sleeping at least 20 hours yes. out of the day yes. and barely eating one meal. Yes. So, I'm, it, it, yeah, this mental health is real. It's not just an on and off switch. Like, it really takes people to help you kind of, like, get over. So I tell people, for me, it, it, you... With the support system and following all the twos and everything, you can be at least 95% you and 5% that right. dark side. Right. You know, instead of being 5% you and 95% the dark side. You know, so it's it's definitely a struggle. I understand. I, I, it's I tr trust me, <laughs> I understand. Anybody, um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them in the question box or just, you know, put it in the chat below. I am speaking to Christine, who is the founder and executive director of Blessings Alopecia Mental Health Foundation. Did I get that right? Yes. All yes, right. <laughs> I want to make sure I get it right. You know, and don't even don't even worry about the name, honey, because the name is exactly what it needs to be. I've had people question my name about one of my businesses, Love Queen Consulting. I've had people ask me, oh, Love Queen, are you like a sex therapist or you know is that involved like sexual activity and I'm thinking like I could add that but no but uh <laughs> you know people are just weird but I do want to get back to the shaming part um because I do want to know what advice could you give to someone who maybe they're involved and maybe they're in a relationship with someone who has mental health issues you know like how how can they avoid shaming that person how can they you know what steps can they take so they can be more sensitive? Because I think that's what it's about. It's about making sure that you're not insensitive towards somebody who's going through mental health. What advice could you give somebody? <sighs> that's a hard one. Um, so are you saying like in the sense of if somebody's in a relationship, like for me, if I was in a relationship and someone was talking to me, how, what can I tell the other person yeah i mean you know like for me i'll, I'll be the example because I mean, like for me i have i suffer with ptsd and bipolar disorder so when my husband and i mm -hmm. first got together now mind you we have been friends for 15 years before we dated but after we got into our relationship you know i had to let him know like certain things trigger me you know i'm i need i need time at sometimes i need space some things that, you know, you can do, it could trigger me. Like, he used to tap me on the butt all the time. And for him, you know, it's a playful, you know, thing. And he was, like, really hurt when I told him I didn't want him to do that because that was something that 
an uncle who molested me used to do. That was the signal of it was coming. So every time he did right. it, it was like, ah, please don't do that. And he'd be looking at me like, what's wrong with you? And I'm like, you just tapped me on my ass like my uncle did, you know, back in the day. And I don't like it. Like, don't do that to me. And it would sometimes make him shut down to the point where he didn't feel like, you know, he didn't know, you know, what would trigger me. So what was your advice for someone like in that situation? Like, how would you, what would you say to them? Um, the only thing I, I encourage people to do is really go seek a professional, yeah. go or either talk to a third party, because sometimes some people don't understand and they don't understand how it can come off. Like, like I tell people, the intentions are good, but the way somebody takes it, you got to respect right. that. Um, so I know for, for a situation for me, I had to take him to therapy um, for the therapist to break it down to him, like, you know, this is what she's going through. This is how it makes yeah. her feel. You know, when it when you do this, it's pretty much a domino effect. Um, and so it was, it, it's more of a learning thing. And he was able to rearrange the way he was saying things or the way he did things to, to respect my mental yeah. health. So a lot of times I'll tell people just, you really have to get somebody in a zone and just sit down and just communicate with them. Because I know for me, it my friends or the people who love me that's around me was like, you know, we don't know. You got to, you know, express yourself and say yeah. something. And it's like, just have the smile on my face and I'm just getting everything done and traveling. It's like, I don't expect that to come from yeah. you. So we, like I said, that's why I have to wear my shirt proudly and just t tell people and encourage people daily that's going through it that they have to speak yes. up and say something. Yes. One, nobody is going to be able to stop, you know, the bullying or stop the the the, pick, the picking and all right. that until we act, all speak up and say, no, we all are going through this. It's not just a here and there. Um, I feel like everybody in the household can go through something, but the fact that they have a spouse mm. or a sibling or an aunt or uncle or someone to lean on, that they don't react yes. to it in a way that a person that doesn't have right. anybody. So that's another educational piece too. A lot of people feel like, well, I have been raped and I've been molested. So I don't understand why you acting yeah. like that. And I'm like, but then you have your yeah. grandparents. Then you had <laughs> like, then you had, a oh, okay. This is the reason right. why I didn't have right. that. I didn't grow up with that. I didn't experience that. So, um, is this definitely a, we need to open up our mouths and wear our shirts. Yeah. <laughs> It's definitely it, 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 it's it, people because I, I, I not even just spouses. I hate it when I'm out in public and somebody say something. It's like, oh well, you, you're crazy. You're just crazy. I'm just like, I can show you crazy. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't it, I, I show doesn't you crazy. it make you feel like you know you? I, for me, I'm always like, well, first of all, let me tell you this. My history of, you know, being molested, being raped, there's certain things that I am not comfortable with certain people acting a certain way towards me. And I have to shut it down. Yeah. I'm like, I'm yeah. I'm a no-nonsense type, like, oh, no, nah, we're not doing that. Like, I can go from zero to 100 real quick. And so I have to, I have to, like, remind myself, like, you know, this person, they, they just don't know. They're insensitive. They have never been trained. You know, I'll be honest with you. My husband, he's never been, he had never been around someone with mental health issues. So he didn't really know. It was to him, it was just like, you know, what's wrong with you? And I'm like, nothing's wrong with me. Everything is right with me. It's just that I have certain things that I have to deal with internally a little bit differently than you do. So right. um, I do want to ask this, like, I know we talked a little bit about your son having alopecia. Has, how, how does he deal with that? Like, how does he deal with like the shaming of that? Cause we can, I mean, mental health uh, shaming, it, it probably coincides with his autoimmune um, illness from uh, alopecia. Yeah. So how does he deal with shaming from that? Because I know people are really mean. People are really, really nasty and they don't understand how, their words affect you. So tell me, how does your how does your son deal with it? 
Um, well, since he got a strong mama, he <laughs> deals with the great. Have you look? Have you ever had to come out and start swinging? Like, don't be talking about my son like that. Like, no. Tell me, have you ever had to go look, off on anybody? You, look, you want me to be? Well, be honest. So, look, true fact. So, this is another reason why I recommend people to get their diagnosis on paper. Yeah. So, um, one. I got to watch watch the wording of the okay. story. So basically, my son was being bullied and being picked on and things of that sort. And um, right around that time, I ended up taking him out of the country for two okay. weeks to China. And the teacher, she was upset. Mm. And she felt a type of way about mm. it. And she felt treating my son a certain type of way. So I respectfully, you know, trying to follow the protocols and schedule meetings and things of that sort. And, you know, things was, you know, <laughs> how they are. So, you know, one day um, my son, he had this emotional mm. toy. And I made sure I went to the schools, did the 504 paperwork, the IEP paperwork, basically everything that he can have this toy in school. So my son comes home. He's like, yeah, my teacher took my toy. And I'm just like. No. I'm a little confused. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah. Um, and I said, well, did you ask for a bag? She, well, she said that you would have to come up there and get it. So I'm under the impression maybe she didn't right. know. I just go, go to her and just get it from her and then leave. So I went up to the school and I was like, hey, I'm just trying to figure out what's going on. You know, I spoke to the principal. He has a 504. She was like, well, I don't care about no 504 and I don't care about no IEP. Hold and up. when your son is in a class with me, he's going to have to do what I say and what I... I don't think so. The, the dark side <laughs> came in. <laughs> Did you see red? Because I always see red flashes before look, I go off. Look, it's more so black. <laughs> there ain't no red. It's black. <laughs> Like, I don't remember nothing. I, I don't recall okay. much. Only thing I know was, um, sorry, only thing I know was they said that I shut the door because we was inside the classroom. I shut the door and I told her, I said, let me tell you something. Threat or no threat. Don't ever take my son's stuff, especially when he has paperwork that said that he's supposed right. to get it. So you feeling as though that you can do what you want to do, what I'm doing, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. Since you're not going to follow the rules, I'm not going to follow the rules right. either. And then Christine came back, and then I we walked out. So I was like, let me just call the police because I don't want them to try to lie mm -hmm. on me and then get barred or right. get, you know, thrown in jail and that. So the police came, and they're, like, ready to lock me up. And, yeah, you know, you, you shut the door, and that's a threat, and that's against school policies and this, that, and that. I'm like, <laughs> oh, I was Right. So, um. So, so when a supervisor got there and I explained, I said, listen, I did everything I was supposed to do. I did a 504 plan. I did an IEP mm -hmm. plan. I did the paperwork and she's going to not follow the handbook and then tell my son and mess with his emotional, you know, his mental right. and this and the third. And, like, and, I, and she was like, well, are you okay? I said, no, because I just suffered from depression, anxiety, and PTSD. And they know that my kids are my right. trigger. And once I said that, it was just like, sorry to inform you guys, but there's nothing we oh, can yeah. do. And everybody's face oh, was yeah. like, huh? Yeah. They was like, for one, she she warned you guys. She gave you guys yeah. paperwork, and she told you guys what her triggers was. That was the first thing. The second thing, the teacher did not follow the rules right. in a handbook and what was supposed to happen. So, therefore, anything that's transpired after that was on oh, the yeah. school. So, technically, Mom is not in the right, but she's in the mm -hmm. right. And they look like, oh, yeah, I, I'm not one of these other parents. Don't like, mm -mm, no. So I was like, thank God I had yes. that paperwork. And, you know, the school right. had it on file and stuff. So I try to recommend people, don't wait until you get incarcerated to get that paperwork. Right. Get it on paper, especially when it comes to Social Security. Like, they need to see that you're going through these things so that when you do actually need it, it's not that hard of a process right. to get it. Right. I went through some similar things with my son with uh, the 504 plan. And so I totally understand because as a parent, number one, you know, you don't want anybody messing with your child. But number two, like, you're not following what this paper says. And I, I honey, I used to go to that school faithfully. And I'm like, it's written down for a reason. 
don't don't play games with yeah. me. I hate I hate it when they try to play games with me. So trust me, I totally understand. Well, Christine, I, I just want to say thank you again for joining me tonight, guys. We are talking about mental health shaming during this No Shame November campaign. Um, please let everybody out there know, you know, how they can support your mission, how they can get that shirt again, because I need that shirt. So I'm definitely getting that shirt. But let them know how they can support your foundation and let them know how they can keep in contact with you and get that shirt. All righty, it's 601. Remember, O P L B A M H, that's on people's line. Blessings, I'll appreciate you, Mental Health, which is 601 675 2264. The website is bamhfoundation.com. Um, you can email us at bamhfoundation at gmail.com. Instagram is bamhfoundation. Um, on Facebook is Blessings Alopecia Mental Health Foundation. Um, so, yeah. So, what do you have <laughs> coming up as far as, and you know, the foundation do you guys have? I know it's COVID, so it's, like, hard to, like, I wanted to do a couple of events this year for my team, Boss Academy, like, all my team uh, mentees. And so, we're doing everything virtual, but, like, for your foundation, um, what what do you have planned? If not twenty twenty, what's what's the plans for twenty twenty one? Tell us some more about what you what your plans are. Um, my plans are for right now. We getting um ready to wrap up for the food drive for Thanksgiving. Nice. Um, we're gonna have. Toy Tell us about that. Holiday. Everybody needs to be supporting this food drive. Hold on, wait a minute. <laughs> Back up, Christine. Let us know how to yeah. do that, please. Um, they can either call the 601-675-2264 and set up a time to um, either drop it off or for me to, or a staff member to come and pick okay. it up um, or inbox us on Instagram or Facebook or email us. Every way um, they can email, um, call, have a way it's easier for them. Um, just let me know what they would like to help out and then we'll just set up an appointment to coordinate everything. So are you taking you taking food donations or what, what donations are you taking? Taking food donation, perishables, gift cards, um, nice. everything. Okay. <laughs> so, yes. There's no limit. Open. I'll yes. make sure, guys, that I will repost um, the food drive so we all can support Christine. Um, and I'll definitely go through my pantry, and I will bring whatever I can, and hopefully I can gather up some coins so I can donate some money and some food cards. It's, I mean, food cards some gift cards as well because I definitely want to support you and I want to help you know I mental health shaming is like probably my top I, I know I talked about body shaming we talked about releasing the shame we talked about slut shaming but mental health shaming is very important to me you know I, I know a lot of people who are currently battling mental health issues I'm going through a healing process right now, I didn't even want to deal with, you know, my mental health issues. Like I made it, I, I, I went all the way left because I was like, I don't want to talk about PTSD. I didn't even know what it was. But once I was diagnosed, I'm like, okay, I need to deal with this. And then I was, you know, diagnosed as bipolar disorder. And I'm like, I don't want people to know this about me. But you know what? That's what this campaign is about. I'm, I don't have any shame mm -hmm. about it. Shout out to Boone for joining. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. But I am like at a point in my life where it's like, I need to heal. I can't be better. I right. can't pour into people. I can't do anything for anyone else if I don't deal with my own issues. So again, I just want to say thank you so much for being so transparent, telling us, you know, your story. I'm just in awe of you. You know, bow down to the queen, honey. I, I really am just so grateful and so thankful that you joined us tonight. Um, if you have any any last words that you want to give to the people out there, I don't want to hold anybody tonight. I think we've had an amazing conversation. I just want to say thank you one more time. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. Many times, but I will one. I, I, I'll finish up with your last question. Was as far as my son, um, before I think when he was like four mm -hmm. or five, it was a little you know, but once we kept reinforcing him that he's a handsome young he man, he is handsome. I went on, I was like, oh my god, he's so cute, <laughs> right? I think now 
Well, now he'd be like, and I'm Mr. Clean. I'm clean. And your point is what? Like, now he has a comeback. So it, it doesn't bother him. And it's like, if it do, he get out there on that field and release it and he's good to go. But, um, but yeah, just follow us on social media. Um, definitely Facebook and Instagram, you, or you can subscribe on our website to stay updated um, on what we have going on. But yes, within the 2020 and 2021, um, we definitely going to have, um, what you call it, social distancing and virtual events so that we can go hiking, um, painting, um, some yes. wine and sip. I want to be a part of all paint. of it, so keep me posted, <laughs> please. I definitely will. Like so, it's uh, I'm, we're definitely open um, to anything. So if anybody has somewhere they want to do or go or sit down, just let me know. We'll figure out how to make sure social distancing yes. or uh, be able to have everybody join um, virtually to get it done. Because um, I just feel like that's what all that we need is somebody there so that we don't feel alone, right. and then we can all just and be able to talk and release it because a lot of times if you like i tell people if you want to go to therapy find a couple yeah. people that you can that's people that you can talk to because once everybody tells their story you can be like oh well i ain't think about right. it like that and, and i should have went that way well let me try this way so um definitely stay tuned to facebook and instagram um, to keep updated on what we have going on and this that we have coming up. Well, I'm definitely keeping posts, keeping on your page. Say your, say your Instagram one more time so everybody knows how to follow you. It's at B A M H Foundation. So B as in blessings, A as in alopecia, M as in mental, H as in health. And then foundation is spelled all the way out. Yes. I'm so thankful that you joined us. Again, um, whatever I can do, I will repost the food drive because I want everybody to support you. And then any of your Thank events, you. um, just let me know. Send me send me a DM or whatever, and I can repost. I can reshare all that good stuff. You always have somebody in your corner right here, Queen. So I'm always here for you. Look, I appreciate <laughs> it. <laughs> Thank you again so much. Anytime you want to talk, look, anybody, anybody want to talk about mental health, they can definitely call me and let's, let's talk about yes, it because yes. I get, I understand and we all need someone to be that ear or at least to say those words that you just said, I'm here to support you. So yes. don't hesitate. I'm here. Thank <laughs> you again so much. So um, I'm going to let you go. I'm going to talk a little bit more about what we're doing next week. But I just want to say thank you one more time for joining me. I really, really appreciate you giving me the time. Are you welcome anytime you guys have a you good too. one? too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Uh-huh. So, guys, we just talked to Christine, and I am so grateful that she joined us tonight. Mental health shaming. Honey, let's talk about it. Thank you, Alicia. I love you. Thank you so much. I do. Miss Palmer, I love you. Guys, so No Shame November, it's, I, I don't even know. I think we're going to have to carry it over to December because I've been speaking to some amazing people about, you know, different forms of shaming. Tonight, we talked about mental health shaming. You know, it was really hard for me to talk to you guys about or, you know, disclose that I have PTSD and bipolar disorder. Like, I'm still, like, every time I say it, I'm like, oh, I don't want anybody to know. But you know what? I have been shamed in the past. I have been called crazy. I've been called psycho. Yes, Charlie, this was absolutely amazing. Um, and so definitely, like, I, I started this as an internal form of healing. But now that it's going, like, the campaign is rolling, I get so many DMs, so many inboxes for people saying, thank you for being transparent. Thank you for doing this. You know, I don't, I don't ever want to make this about me. So I would love to network with anybody and talk to anybody who's willing to talk about a form of shaming. I am talking to someone about um, homophobia in the black community next Tuesday. 
So please stay tuned because you all know, you know how that goes. You know, I grew up in church. My father is a pastor. So, you know, it, it, it's not just about the church. It's about the black community, period. I love you too, Diane. <laughs> it's about, it is really about the black community and how we shame homosexuals, you know, LGBTQ. I want to talk about it. I'm talking to someone who um, is in that community as well as a former uh, exotic dancer. So it's going to be exciting to speak to her um, and talk about those two things. Six said, no shame December. Yes, we need to carry it all out until the end of the year. You're so courageous and inspirational. Keep telling your story. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. This has been a journey. Let me tell you guys, I have gone from not wanting to say anything to being on here telling all my business. You know, I'm a business woman telling all my business, but it's all good, you know, because I really care about your health. And if you don't know, I am a love activist. I talk about love all the time because when I was younger, I never felt love. I didn't know what love truly was. So if you don't know anybody else out there that loves you, I love you. <laughs> hey, Darian, I love you too. I just saw you earlier. It's my cousin. Love, love, love you. DJ Six Sense, I love you. But guys, we're going to be back Monday. I have something I'm working on Monday. And I'm going to be honest with you. I want to talk about, I really want to talk to the teens. I want to I do something for the teens. So I'm putting something together for the teens because I don't want to leave them out of this. You know, um, so I want to work on something for Monday for the teens. If you have a team, please tune in on Monday. Stay tuned because I'm definitely putting that together. Hopefully, I'll have everything finalized today. So I'll be posting that. Um, shout out to Christine. Shout out to Blessings. Alopecia Mental Health Foundation. I got it that time, honey. I got it. Shout out to her. Her um Website is pinned. We're going to support her with her food drive. And she's also, you know, going to be hosting a lot of events. So if you if you have mental health, if, if you have a mental health illness, you definitely want to stay in contact with me and Christine because we're going to put some things together. We do need to have some, you know, some time with like-minded people because at this point right now, a lot of us are going through it during this whole COVID situation it's like it's tough and so if you suffer you know from mental health issues being in the house is a lot my kids they are going through it I know your kids are going through it all of us are but we all have to work together and that's what this whole thing is about this whole no shame November is about loving ourselves truly wholeheartedly we've all been shamed in some form some form of fashion we've been shamed let me tell y'all I love y'all I just want to say thank you so much for tuning in. This is No Shame November. Tonight we talked about mental health, shaming. Whatever you do, educate each other. Educate, educate the people in your household. Just because someone goes to see a therapist doesn't mean that they're crazy. That means that they want to get that healing process started. So congratulate them on taking the first step. So I want to say thank you to everybody who's tuned in. I just want to tell you guys I love you. I know the holidays are next week. We're going to have some family time. Hopefully most of it is virtual because we're not trying to spread COVID. We're not trying to get COVID. But anyway, I want you guys to make sure you tune in next Monday and next Tuesday. I think I'm going to take off Wednesday and Thursday because I got a lot of macaroni and cheese to cook. Y'all been putting them orders in. I'm like, I might have to cancel that. No, I'm just playing. But if you'd like me to make your personal pan of macaroni and cheese, I got you. So guys, I love you. Stay tuned. Next Monday and Tuesday is going down again. We're talking to someone about um, someone about homophobia in the black community and we're also going to deal with colorism so stay tuned next week if you want to join this live dm me i'd love to sit down and talk to you if you have another form of shaming that you'd like to tackle i'd also like to talk to someone about age shaming you know if you have you know an older 
uh, parent, grandparent who wouldn't mind getting on the live and talking to me about, you know, being shamed for their age, let me know. All right, guys. So you have a good night. Thank you so much for tuning in. All right.